Okay, in this presentation we are going to work with the Lubridate package. Okay, so I'm using Base R just because it's easy to read and we can work along. Uh, I changed the color f from red to purple just in case you're wondering, just to make it a little bit less glaring. Anyway, what this is a description that comes from the reference on CRAN, so you should be able to find this uh, what, about what it does. Functions to work with date times and time spans. Fast and user-friendly parsing of date-time data, extraction and updating of components of a date-time, such as years, months, days, hours, minutes, and seconds, algebraic manipulation on date-time and time span objects. The Lubridate package has a consistent and memorable syntax that makes working with dates and easy and fun. The authors are Gareth Grohlmund and Hadley Wickham. I think there might be other ones as well, actually, but so apologies for not including anybody else. Tidyverse collection, so it's from the Tidyverse collection of R packages. Now I'm not quite sure if it is automatically uploaded there, but I think if you go looking for Tidyverse, you will be able to find important information about packages like Lubridate and other ones like HMS. Uh, just as an aside, I'm also going to upload, uh, load up the Magritte R package as well, just to make life easy for myself. So the first thing I'm going to do today is I am going to see what date it is today. So I'm going to use, a, this is a fundamental command. It's base R command, it's not part of tidyverse. And so what I'm going to do here is, let's upload that. There we go. So the HMS, the, sorry, the Lubridate command I'm interested in is today, but just actually a remark, it's very similar to this uh, command, this function also, sysdate. And this is a date object. So, just in case you're wondering. Okay, so, using Lubridate, we have a couple of wrapper functions that are similar enough to what we have there. For example, we have a command here called, from Lubridate, called today, open bracket, close bracket. And this day is, uh, there we have the date there, okay? And it is also a class object. It's also a date object with the classes equal to date, okay? So, that's grand. So what we can do is actually pick out uh, components from this date object. For example, we can pick out the year, the month, and the date, and the day. Okay, so it's the 25th of the 12th, 2017. And yes, you're correct. This is Christmas Day on the day of recording. I am just sitting back and relaxing, okay? And because there's no good films on TV. So what day is it today? Well, there's another command, W day, and that means it is just actually what date of the week this is, or what day of the week. Now, it's the second day of the week, but what does that mean? Because in Britain and Ireland, that would usually mean Tuesday, but in North America, that would mean Monday. And we are working on the basis of the North American setting, so it's actually a Monday. Okay, so how do I do that? Add in this extra command, label equals true. And it just tells us, essentially, the ordering there. So Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday is day one, Monday is day two, all the way up to Saturday, which is day seven. Okay, so let's just actually just check class again. Ordered factor, okay. So it's a factor. Essentially, the key piece of information there really is that it's a Monday. That's all I really wanted to know. Okay. So as well as today's date, we also have the system time. And we can use the, there's in, in the main command in, in R is called sys time with a capital S for sys. But we also have now, which gives pretty much identical results essentially. And so we can perform arithmetic, uh, some sort of very simple operations, very simple to what I've just done there previously. For example, this hour, this minute, this second, it's four o'clock, 20 minutes, 24 minutes past four, and just right now it is 16 seconds, well, at the time of calculation, it was 16.29 seconds as part of that time period. So. Um, those are some useful commands for extracting information out of date time. Okay, so for, for example, if you want to sort of, if you want to pull a date time object apart, this is very useful. And there is a lot 
of opportunities for doing that okay now i'm just going to move on to the next thing so we can specify dates okay so for argument's sake what i'm going to do here just to start off is that Bluebird date offers a variety of functions for parsing date times so for example if i was to specify a certain date uh, the 1st of april 2016 i can actually import that as a, that's a string there just a bit of character text but i can specify that text as a date and it, it, it picks it out there this date is 2016 0401 uh, that's the 1st of april 2016 as we would say we would use uh, where I'm from. We would use that ordering there. Now uh, I remember where I was. I was in a French house, a pub in London, and I met the lead singer of a band called Madness. His name is Suggs, and I think he's there quite regularly on April Fool's Day. Not a guarantee, but if you're ever passing around London and around the first of April, sometimes it's the day before you might run into him and say hello anyway so you don't we can if for the sake of clarity we can break up we can be uh, adding these little specifiers or these little separators okay but it's not absolutely necessary for example in this example here i didn't do it but it's it's problematic okay it, it, it can be very problematic so i suggest that if you have something like this you should just try and break it up into, you know, to just try and use this sort of format as opposed to this format, okay? Because it's okay here, but it's just problematic in general. Now, let's just say for argument's sake, I wanted to pick out other formats. So, date, day, month, year. So, specify the day of the month, then the month, then the year. Well, that works. As long as I use DMY. Or if I was uh, the North American specification, MDY, which is the month first, then the day, and then the year. Okay, you can use that, MDY. Okay. And also, you can actually, again, use, find out what day it was. So April Fool's Day fell on a Friday in 2016. So... Yeah, you don't need to use the specifiers there. Or, well, sorry, that's a, that's, that's a bit of a leftover there. Now, now, so I use the separators there. I'm using the hyphens there, otherwise known as minus signs. Now, I can use the slashes here, but just be very careful. This one is fine. So just be careful between backslashes and forward slashes. Now, the reason is, and the one you have to be careful with, I'll just actually show you here, is this one is fine. But this one is used for text, okay? So off the top of my head, I believe that's a forward slash and this is a backslash. It doesn't matter actually which one because everyone just gets them confused and gets confused as to which one is fine, even if they know absolutely which one is which. But just actually, just to remark, this one here, if it's used in the path, if, it, if it's using commands like, get, like the get working directory command, it's fine, okay? So just ha that's a sort of, that's the real way to tell if something's okay with regards to these slash operators, okay? So this one's fine, okay? So we can use the slash operator here, the forward slash, but we can't use the backslash, okay? Because it just actually, this is to do with regular expressions and text and so on, and it's sort of reserved for that sort of thing, so it just doesn't work anywhere else. So just be very careful with these slash operators. So I think that's actually everything I'm going to do in this uh, particular presentation. Just, it was just a sort of introduction to Lubridate. But what I'm going to do now in the next one is actually uh, do some arithmetic operations with differences in times and so on. So we'll leave it there.